Good Sunday evening. Wow, good services today. Um, my wife this morning, what a fabulous service. And then the two o'clock service for the Spanish uh, or Latino church was very um, powerful. So thank you, um, Pastor Deborah Smith and Pastor Narvice for um, what a wonderful message that they preach today our Spanish service and our 11 a.m. service. September 6th is the very first Sunday of September. Um, we will be getting, we will be going back on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock on campus at um, the Rock Church 540 South Main Street. Only one service though. The 10 a.m. service will be um, Sunday starting September 6th. We'll have full-fledged Sunday school and youth department. And um, so um, we'll have a full-fledged service and all that type of things. We will still be on Facebook Live. Um, TRC Family, our um, channel for Inst um, oh, what's it? Uh, YouTube, no, yeah, YouTube, YouTube. We have our YouTube channel, TRC Family. Um, please go and, sub and, hit and subscribe and hit the, the bell for um, when we put new ones up that you'll know that new messages, new teaching is being put on. But i um, very excited about what everything is going on for the church. And um, um, I'm excited about this evening's service. I kind of wasted time just waiting for people to get on. And I, I know that unfortunately, um, some people are just like church. Um, they don't get on, they don't get there until 10 minutes late. But uh, hopefully they won't be late for the rapture, <laughs> the second coming of the Lord. But I'm um, very, very pleased of, of um, the numbers of people that are viewing our services. Again, been told we're on five continents. Our services are being on five continents. That's just awesome. And then also um, um, hundreds and thousands of people are watching our, YouTube, our, our um, TRC Family United the clue in Lake Jackson, and then also um, our uh, YouTube channel, TRC Family. Uh, it's good to see my sister-in-law, Hope, on there. I'm sure Brent's with her, and I'm glad to have all of you today. Well, it looks like um, people are getting on here okay, and um, I think I've got all the announcements out of the way, and, per se. But again, September 6th. Um, we still will be on live for the um, Rock Church um, service uh, September 6th, which will be 10 Central Time and 11 Eastern Time um, that we'll be back on campus. Um, 6 p.m. service will still be on um, Facebook Live only. And then, of course, TRC Family on the YouTube. And then Wednesdays will be that way also. Um, this Wednesday, we're going to be finishing up um, about the end times. Um, we're going to be finishing, finishing up about uh, Revelation. So we were excited about all of you being a part of this last uh, Wednesday night service. Uh, if you did not get that, you can go back uh, and, of course, look it up and you can uh, view that. Uh, well, we're going to finish it up this Wednesday. Then the next Wednesday after that, we're going to be uh, studying Psalms 91. Don't know about you. Um, of course, I put it on on the on the pages. Um, I have been praying consistently, and I've asked our members of our church to pray Psalms 91 for the Texas coast, uh, so that uh, tropical storm or hurricane that is coming that will not affect us. If it does land, that everybody else will be um, taken care of. Uh, it won't be um, something that will just tear. Uh, our state up or our cities up, but it will, um, God will have his hand in all that. I believe in that. I believe in, I've been praying for um, this for a while. Um, again, um, let's gather together right now in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this evening. Thank you for so many people that are joining in already. Um, the hundreds of people that are going to be joining the people that are in the different continents that are joining, um, possibly be later or even right now. And Lord, the ones that they'll view this maybe in a week or two, 
I pray the Holy Ghost will just be as strong as ever before. Again, I'm thankful for my wife that preached a beautiful message today and uh, Pastor Narvice that preached a wonderful message for our Latino congregation. And I ask you this evening, nothing less, nothing more, but your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. God bless you. I want, to, want us to turn to Philippians 2, chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. And if you notice, I put my title up there. I'm trying to do that. I I'm, don't know if our other ones that are doing this know how to do that. It's very simple. All that They just need to look. It's very simple to do. But um, shining in a dark world. And I put the two scriptures that I'm going to mainly focus on up there so it should be easy enough for you able to get to um, Philippians 2 chapter 2 verse 15 and 16 that ye may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of the crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world holding forth the word of the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. And um, we are living in a perverse generation in the world today. And I want my light to be clear. I want it to be pure. And the only way that can be if the holiness and the righteousness of God shines through me. I have to be ready and I have to prepare myself for that. I was talking to a man one time, um, not too awfully long ago, and um, well, when I say that, you, the Rock Church knows me. That could have been 10 years ago, or it could have been 10 months ago, or 10 minutes ago. Um, don't know for sure, can't remember, but I do remember this. I was talking to a man, and he said, I have enough problems of my own. And, um, and, he, and he said, I, I, I'm a Christian but I just haven't got time or the energy to worry about anyone else's problems. You might have said that. I got my hand raised. Might not have said it verbally, but mentally or emotionally, dealing with something, I felt that way. And I can't understand his attitude. When we have problems, they have a way of blocking out everything and everyone else. And it's not necessarily wrong to give your attention to our own problems and with God's help to overcome them, if we can. But when our problems, now listen to me, when our problems deafens us to the hurts of others, when they make us fail to, uh, to reach out to someone else that, could, that we could help, then we have become um, a part of darkness instead of a shining light. We need to be shining lights like stars. We, our problems cannot cause us to hurt others. We, when we have problems of our own, and we're human just like anybody else, but thank the Lord. If we will focus on him, as my wife spoke this morning, as we focus upon him and we trust in him, when we believe in him, our problems should not be as big as the world's problems because we have hope. But if those problems, and that's, this is how you're going to know that you have taken your belief from God and you've started looking more at the problems instead of having faith in God, is that you might even become hurtful to others because all you're thinking about is your own situation or your own life. That's not a good thing. Uh, do you remember the Good Samaritan? No doubt he was preoccupied with his own journey, but he still stopped and took care of the man who had been left for dead. If you would, well, let's turn to um, Luke chapter 10, uh, 
verse starting at 25. Again, I think I've, I put those up there by my title, so it should be easy to be able to get to later. Verse 25, and I'm going to go to 37. I want to read these, but I also want us to understand um, something that, um, and, and this message is going to be relatively short compared to some of my others, I guess, um, according to what the Lord wants. But sometimes we'll get so wrapped up about these things that we got to put on our face. You know, I don't know how many of us, how many times I've got it out of my truck or gotten out of my wife's uh, pilot and started walking to the post office or started walking to the store or started going, maybe go to your workplace and you forgot your face mask or your, your, the thing that you're supposed to put on your face and you turn back around and under your breath, yeah, I get some thumbs up on that. Under your breath, forgive me for saying this, you're probably cussing up the storm. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Complaining, and, uh, and you might even say, Great, oh, I can't. I'm, I'll be so glad when this not, not nonsense stops. And, and through the whole process of that, we can get so involved in um, our own little situation. It could be just as simple as we forgot our face masks and we're going into the post office and now we're frustrated, now we're upset, and we walk in and we're checking our mail out of our little P.O. box and we maybe got mail to drop, but we walk across somebody that is spiritually dead and they're looking for some help and they might even say something to you, but you ignore and you just kind of say, hey, yeah, how you doing? And you go on, or you might even make the statement, and this is ridiculous, but we always have to wear a face mask you know, this, this is no greater than the common flu and all. I mean, you might get into a little, but they're not looking for you to validate about what's going on in your life or even in their life. They're looking for you to help them with their life and in their life. Let's read that scripture. Luke chapter 10, verse 25, starting now. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up, tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law, thou readest thou. And he answered, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto them, Thou hast answered right this do and thou shalt live but he willing to justify himself said unto jesus and who is my neighbor and jesus answered and said a certain man went down from jerusalem to jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead and by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. Be careful about judging that priest. We need to evaluate our own lives. Are we walking around because we don't want to deal with somebody or deal with a situation? And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and we saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and set upon him his own beast, and brought him to an inn, took care of him, and on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of thee three thankest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that soweth mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, Go and do likewise. 
I want to I want to make a statement here, and and I, I'm not uh, I'm not uh, criticizing, but I see a lot of things on Facebook and different and um, some of the other social pages. Uh, I, my mind's going blank on some of the others. But, you know, you'll see this guy with $100 of bills. Thank God for him. But he's always posting himself helping people. Hopefully he's doing it just to encourage you to help somebody. But this man didn't seem, I, I know they didn't have cell phones back then, but it didn't seem like he was looking for any type of recognition. He left him some money. It doesn't look like he said, hey, my name's so-and-so. Tell this guy I helped him. You know, uh, there's times I'll, I'll, I'll pay for police officers. Or there's times that we're at Bucky's or whatever. Or to, it's a gas station for you northern folks. Um, that um, I'll go in and uh, while I'm standing there pumping gas, I see somebody and I feel like the Lord tells me, put gas in her tank. Unfortunately, I have to go see them, and I just tell them, he said, I don't want to um, startle you or, or embarrass you. If you prefer not to, just let me know. But I felt like the Lord has asked me to put gas in your vehicle. Um, and I didn't put my video camera out. And video, hey, I'm the pastor of the Rock Church. I'm feeling the will of God here, and I'm putting gas in this person's vehicle. The church is going to be paying for this. I, I, I feel the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not making fun, but I'm not doing that for that reason. Do I tell them about the church? Yes. Do I leave them a card? Yes. I usually give them a pen, too. And 99.9% and, and .9 of the time, um, well, I could almost say 100%, I have never seen any of those folks ever come to our church. And I've been doing it for years, um, probably 20, 30 30 more, probably more than 30 years I've been doing it. I can't, I don't know of one of them that have come to our church. But I've done what I was told to do by the Spirit of God. Now, when we help people, and I know that we've talked about and we, we've shared about uh, the 200 backpacks, and a lot of that uh, we, uh, BS, ASF uh, country, uh, shooting place, several different businesses, um, people that are watches, watches us on Facebook. Some of you don't even live in the area, send us $100 checks or, or more, and, and you're being a part of that. We're sharing that. We're not advertising us. We're trying to help people. Now, I, I believe that we need to do, do the will of God. And if we're so wrapped up within ourselves, now I preached baptism in Jesus' name. You know that. I preach um, asking God to forgive us of our sins. I preach the, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. I preach about living a righteous and holy life. And we really are, have no righteousness. Ours is filthy rags. And we, without the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, we're not able to walk a holy life. So um, I, I preach on those type of things. I, I, I talk about those type of things. But if we are all about, about what we are doing and we're not helping someone else, God led or there's just a need there to be taken care of? The Samaritan, as far as I understand, and understand the study of this, from the, the, the priest to the Levite to the Samaritan, he was the furthest one from understanding who God was. But he had more of a tender heart to help humanity. And if we have all the understanding and the knowledge of the word of God and have all the gifts of the spirit flowing in us and the fruit of the spirit in us, but we don't have love, what's the Bible say? I'll leave that open to you. You can fill in on the, on the comment section. Or if you don't know, research it. I want you to understand something. We have 
to be able, again, it don't even have to be God-led. You, have you ever remember, and maybe some of you have never gone through rough times, but most of us have gone through some rough times in our life. And that person that we never knew or might have known that shook our hand and had a $5 bill in it, maybe even a $1 bill, different, different times, different age. I remember there's times somebody hand me a dollar bill. Now that's been some years ago, but that dollar bill uh, got me two gallons of gas or got me, a, you know, or, or, or uh, got me half of a, a number one meal at that time or got me a, a hamburger and a Coke um, at a certain um, um, a fast food place. I, I remember that many times being in the military or, or on my own. Somebody slipped me a dollar or two dollars and I was able to eat that day. How many times that when all of a sudden we quote unquote arrive, that we forget no matter what stage of life, it could be a young person, it could be a young married couple, it could be a middle age, middle age married couple. I mean, you go on up to senior citizens, to see there's some senior citizens, they're, the only thing they've been able to retire with is Social Security. And so, you know, some of them, Social Security, some of them only make about $800 a month and that's it. And, and, and most of them are very, have been frugal and wise and they've had their homes paid off. You know, they, before their 30 year mortgage came up, they had it all paid off and all that. But still, you know, just as well as I do, $800 a week sometimes is very difficult just to live by with the, the way things are today. <clears throat> but when God talks to you or when you even feel why don't you submit and let God use you? And let God use you. Don't make it about you. Oh, I, I gave that person $100. Well, that's nice. But God gave you that $100 to give to him. That's how you need to look at it. Thank you, Lord, that you supplied not just my needs, not just my wants, but you gave him, you given me enough to be able to help you to show some kindness and love to supply others what they might need. I know I may be coming at you a totally different way tonight. And we have wonderful message messages. I preached some wonderful messages just in this last few services. But I want us to think about some things. Our salvation is more than just repenting of our sins. Now, you that are maybe spiritually immature, you might not understand what I'm just said there. Yes, we have to repent. I repent daily. And, and I have to have the baptism of Jesus' name and filling of the Holy Ghost. I've got to walk. But it's more than just what we want to hear and we shout about it's sometimes that we have to go out of our way or out of our our comfort zone or, or maybe not go across the road but maybe hit it head on and help somebody what greater what greater way of showing God's love is actually getting on your hands and knees and helping somebody and patching up their wounds and carrying them and put them in on your own transportation, your own animal, your own car, and you transport them to an inn, to a hotel, to the hospital on your own dime. And you're not advertising about how great you are, but you're showing how great he is. Because without him, truly, I can do nothing. Not even buy a man a cup of coffee without him. Without him, I have no understanding about his love. But with his love, I can share my love that he has through me. I want to thank you again for listening to me tonight. I hope and I pray that you will be 
hearing the word. Not just hearers of the word, but hearers of the word and doers of the word. I spoke to you biblical principles tonight. The words that I spoke to you, I believe they were from God. They were biblical principles to you. It wasn't thou this, there wasn't this, and I didn't give you a whole lot of Greek, but I'm telling you in the spirit of God, if you have no compassion to your fellow man, you're not fulfilling the scriptures that I read earlier. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Let God use you according to your faith in him. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this evening. I pray this word has gone deep in their heart. And they just won't be hearers of the word, but they'll be doers of the word. The Sunday morning service, what a phenomenal service. Oh, my wife preached. Thank God for I believe. I believe. And thank God for our Spanish service today, that Brother Narvaez preached today, that he was led by the Holy Ghost to speak to our Latino congregation. Thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Ghost that was spreading out through our afternoon service. Tonight, no less than what I am speaking tonight, might not be as, as, as cheering off the sand chandeliers of those messages, but this message is just as a deep within the heart of, of God than any other message because he wants us to be his hands, his feet, and his means of sharing his love for humanity. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much again. This Wednesday night, we'll be finishing up Revelations. God bless you, in Jesus' name.